So continuing our way here through the wonderful world of trig, uh, I wanted to remind you of your basic six trig functions. Uh, if you look on page 322, you can see all those. I'm going to show you this because this is kind of just as easy. Um, so if this is our angle that we're identifying, so they're calling that angle theta, uh, remember that sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. Our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and our tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh, then of course you have their inverse functions. So if we flip the three basic ones upside down, then we get their inverse functions. And so total of six. So we get cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Uh, so just want to remember those. You're seeing in the first example here, just some, just a quick reminder of what that would look like as you set up those fractions. Um, if you're ever missing a piece of that right triangle, we know we could use Pythagorean theorem to find it. Uh, and that's what they did right here. So this is a lot of this is going to be just review for you guys. I know you get a healthy dose of this in geometry. Uh, you do it again in algebra two towards the end. Um, and so we'll get through this, this lesson pretty quick here because a lot of this should be a review for you. So we're going to try some of that here real quick on the next page. Just so you guys remember how all this fun stuff worked. So let's try two of these. So in these problems, they're giving us some information to start with. We need to fill in the rest. So the tangent we already know is 4 over 3. That's the one they're giving us. So of course, cotangent is just the reciprocal function of that. So 3 over 4. So let's see if we can come up with the other guys. Uh, remember that tangent does opposite over adjacent. You guys all remember the Sokotoa phrase, I'm sure. So uh, just our way of remembering those those uh, ratios and relationships. So tangent, if we're going to do opposite over adjacent. So from this angle, we're making this opposite over adjacent. Uh, if we used a little Pythagorean theorem, we get the third side, which would be 5. If we did a little a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, and of course, some of these relationships you might just remember. We learned some Pythagorean triples like the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Um, so some of those are great shortcuts if you remember those. Anyway, now that we've filled all this triangle out, really easy to fill in the remaining functions. So we know sine does opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be 4 over 5. And of course, if I flip that upside down, I get the cosecant, and then for cosine, we know is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 3 over 5. And if I flip that upside down, I get the secant, which is 5 over 3. So let's try it with this one, and this one they're giving us the secant function. So secant we know is 7 over 5. So if I flip that upside down, I get the cosine value. 5 over 7. Uh, so if we just fill out with a little bit of information that we know, since cosine does adjacent over hypotenuse, from that angle right there, we're going to do the adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, in this one, this is not one of our Pythagorean triples, so we're going to do a little Pythagorean theorem, which of course is going to give us a radical um, on this one because it's not a Pythagorean triple. Uh, so if I did a little, we'll call it x, Let's do a little a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if we do a little cleanup on that, uh, I'm going to subtract my 25 over to my 49. And get this guy, and then we're going to square root both sides. Uh, we always want to simplify our radicals as much as we can, so we're not going to leave that as the square root of 24. Uh, we're going to call that 2 rad 6. And on these guys, we are not going to throw in a plus or minus uh, as we go through this process because at this point, uh, this, this simply represents... Um, the length of a segment, so we're going to keep it positive. Everything at this point is still sort of a first quadrant uh, process, and so we're keeping all of our all of our segments positive for this. Uh, but now we can look at something like sine, and we can do opposite over hypotenuse, uh, so it becomes two red six over seven. And 
and I'll flip that upside down in just a minute. Uh, you might already see the issue we're going to run into here, but uh, we'll do that, that part second. Let's do the tangent, which would be opposite over adjacent. So 2 red 6 over 5. All right, so what makes this one a little extra fun is when we flip this upside down, it puts a radical on bottom, which we know we're not allowed to keep. Uh, and so if I flip that over and call it 7 over 2 red 6, Remember, we got to clear out that radical from the bottom. Uh, just one of those standing rules that we don't leave radicals in the denominator. So we are going to multiply by root 6 over root 6. So it looks like this. Uh, as I just go straight across, I'm going to have 7 root 6 on top. Um, on bottom, uh, remember when you do the square root of 6 times the square root of 6, all it does is cancel out the radical. Uh, it becomes 6 times 2. So we get the 12 on bottom. If I could reduce these numbers, I would. But obviously, 7 and 12 don't reduce. So I'm going to leave it as it is. So there's our cosecant. Let's do the same thing for cotangent. It puts the rad 6 on bottom. So we got to take the extra step of clearing that out. We call that rationalizing the denominator. You might remember that phrase. That's an Algebra 2 thing that we did. Uh, as I multiply straight across, I got 5 rad 6 on top. Uh, and again, 12 on bottom as I multiply those together. And can't reduce any farther. So there we go. We have our six trig functions. So let me take it back to the next example. So for this next one, we're going to look at solving a right triangle. And all that means is we need to find everything that's missing. So I want to make sure that I know what all three angles are and what all three sides are. And typically, here's when you first learned about Sokotoa, um, is when you start using it to find missing segments of a triangle. So as we look at this one, we were told uh, that we have a right triangle and that we have a 35 degree angle. So that's all the information that we're given on this one. Uh, one of the things that we know right off the bat is if this is 35, that must be 55, right? Because remember, this all this comes back to the three angles of any triangle add up to 180. If this is 90, that always is going to leave me with 90 degrees for the other two angles. And so these two acute angles should always add to 90. So if I just did 90 minus 35, that gives me this guy, which we now know is 55. And so on this one, nice and easy, we now know all three angles. We just now need to come up with our size that we got right here. So we do know that the hypotenuse is 6. That would be this guy. So let's use that info to come up with our two remaining sides. Um, and at this point, you could go from this angle or this angle. Totally your choice. Uh, they chose to go with the 35 degrees. Um, and so when they did the sine of this angle, so sine of 35 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So here's their setup right here. So to get A by itself, all we have to do is multiply 6 over to the left. And that gives you this equation right here. Uh, and the rest is calculator. So you just type in 6 sine 35, and you got your length of A. Um, Keep in mind, this is going to be a big deal all chapter long, but you got to know if you should be in radians or degrees. So obviously on this one, we are working with degrees. So make sure your calculator is in degrees when you do stuff like this. Uh, once we know that this is 3.44, um, I could technically at this point use Pythagorean theorem in order to get my third side. Um, but I always encourage students not to do that for these if you don't have to because this is a rounded number, not an exact number. Um, and so you never really want to use a rounded number to find something else if you don't have to. Um, it's better to stick with the exact values that we were given in order to find our third side. So they use cosine of 35 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's the setup for the other one. And again, I'm going to multiply 6 over to the left. That gives me this equation right here. Type that into the calculator, and we got our third side. So let me jump over to the example page so we can try something like that.
So we are going to try solving this triangle. So on this one, they're giving us the hypotenuse is 10. So we already know that one right off the bat. Angle A is 65 degrees. So again, if I subtract this from 90, that would tell me my other angle. So if we did 90 minus 65, it tells me this guy is 25 degrees. So we know all three of our angles. We know one of our sides. A little soak a toe to get the two remaining sides. Uh, so on this one, let's just work from the angle that they gave us. I'm going to work from angle A. Uh, so I'm going to start out with the sine of angle A equals opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to say sine 65 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So again, I'm just going to multiply my 10 over to the left. So on my calculator, let me grab that real quick. And so you can see right here, I'm in radians right now. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to go into mode. And let's go down here to degrees. So I'm going to hit 10 sine 65. Now we got that one, 9.06. I always like filling in the diagram as I go. I really think it helps give you a good visual of uh, how your setup should work. Oftentimes students will flip these guys upside down or something like that. So uh, be careful on those kinds of things. Having a diagram does help with those issues. So let's do our third side, which is side B. So we're going to say the cosine of 65 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So type that one in. I'm going to do 10 cosine 65, 4.23. And we have solved the triangle. Let me jump down to our next one. Before I turn the page, uh, I wanted to remind you guys of some special relationships that we got to be familiar with. Um, so if you look at these, you might remember our 45-45-90 triangle and our 30-60-90 triangle. Um, <clears throat> so some patterns that you want to recognize on these is... In a 45, 45, 90, because these angles are the same, that makes this an isosceles triangle, which means our two legs are the same. Uh, so we can just call these X and X. Um, and the relationship is from the leg to the hypotenuse, you can multiply your leg times the square root of 2. And that will give you the hypotenuse. If you're ever given this information, you can always divide by the square root of 2 in order to get the leg. With your 30, 60, 90, uh, we're going to call the short leg. So you have a short leg, which is always across from 30, your long leg, which is always across from 60, and then your hypotenuse, right? So the short leg we call X. To go from your short leg to your long leg, we multiply by the square root of 3. And again, you could always divide this by the square root of 3 in order to get your short leg from short leg to hypotenuse times 2. So again, same relationship. You could always divide by 2 in order to get this guy. Do keep in mind that if you're ever given um, a side like this and they're asking you to find the angle, a um, couple things that we always want to be familiar with. One is there are certain relationships that we always want to know. Um, there are definitely some times I can use a calculator. There's times I'm going to have to use a calculator. So just as a quick reminder, if I'm ever looking for the angle and I know a side relationship, um, I can always use an inverse function in order to get my missing angle. So if I did the inverse sine of one half, that will tell me the angle that I'm working with. So in this case, 30 degrees. Um, so I could do the same thing for this, but I do want you to remember if you are familiar with these relationships, Remember, all of this is going to head into our unit circle, um, and the unit circle all goes back to 45, 45, 90s, and 30, 60, 90s. So when I see a relationship like 1 over 2, 
automatically I look at this connection right here, right? And so look at your 30 degrees for a minute. So if I said the sine of this angle equals 1 over 2, right? I know that's the relationship that I see in my 30, 60, 90. So automatically I already know that's 30 degrees, right? I would not need the calculator for that. Just like if they said the cosine of an angle is 1 over 2, right? I would know that's 60 degrees. Or if they said the tangent is the square root of 3. Well, tangent does opposite over adjacent. So I know tangent of 60 is rad 3 over 1. And so I would know the tangent of 60 degrees is the square root of 3. So there's all these relationships that we're going to need to be familiar with uh, that, uh, that all go back to these special right triangles. So here's one more of those. If I said the cosine of what angle is rad 2 over 2, that's just another one that we're going to need to know. If I look at this diagram, I know the cosine of 45 is 1 over rad 2. But right back up to what we were just doing up above, uh, if I rationalize my denominator and multiply straight across, I get rad 2 over 2. So we know that the cosine of 45 degrees is rad 2 over 2. If you took these degrees, the 30, the 45, and the 60, and you convert them to radians, so remember if you multiply those by pi over 180, you start getting these guys, and these are also those familiar items that we're going to need to know for our unit circle, right? So we definitely want to be familiar with some of these guys that we're going to need to be able to recognize without a calculator. So I just wanted to remind you of some of that. I know you were introduced to these uh, in Algebra 2. Uh, so keep these guys in mind as we move forward. So we already did that top one on the previous page. Let me jump down into a little word problem here. Um, when it comes to angles of elevation and depression. Uh, you might have heard those before. I think you get introduced to those in Algebra 2. Um, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but here's the main idea. If I was standing here, right, and I was looking up, right, my reference angle here is my angle of elevation. So they always call this one the angle of elevation. Um, the angle of depression is like if I was standing on top of this hill looking downward, right? Then I get my angle of depression right here. So one thing you always got to recognize on these guys is your angle of elevation and your angle of depression are always, always, always formed with a horizontal line, never a vertical line. So your angle of depression does not go here. And that's a pretty common mistake. Uh, so I need to create another horizontal line in order to see my angle of depression. Okay, so because of this, one of the things you did back in your geometry days uh, was something called alternate interior angles, which is what depression and elevation are. And so we know that elevation and depression are equal, always. So as long as you are, if, if you're given an angle of elevation or depression, as long as you associate it with a horizontal line, then we're never going to go wrong on that because these two guys are always equal. So it doesn't matter if they tell me something about depression or elevation. As long as I, as long as I link it to a horizontal line, I'll be safe, whether I put it here or here. So let's go into this one real quick. Uh, so we were told from a point 80 feet away from the base of the building. So that helps me know where that 80 goes. So 80 feet away from the base of the building, uh, we get the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 72 degrees. No matter how they draw this triangle, as long as I put that 72 degrees with connected to a horizontal line, then I know I'm safe. So I know I can't put it here because I cannot connect it to the vertical line. I got to connect it to the horizontal line. Uh, they ultimately wanted us to find the height of the building which is going to be this right here. Um, height should pretty much always refer to a vertical line. right? We would never do height um, as a slanted line like this. 
right? So I know this is going to be the height of my building. So we're right back into doing a little Sokotoa uh, to find our missing piece. So we know that the tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. So for the tangent of 72 would equal h over 80. So just like I was doing earlier on, if I multiply the 80 over to the left, I get the height of the building. So I'm just going to type in 80 tan 72. So about 246. And we got the height of our building. So that's going to be it for this guy. We'll continue on in the next one.